Hello again. Welcome to a new class. We're slowly approaching the end. And the sentence today is, how is Luis getting on? ¿Cómo va Luis? ¿Qué tal va? ¿Cómo le van las cosas? En salud. How's Luis getting on? Getting along. Getting on, getting along. How's Luis getting along? Americano. How's Luis getting on? Británico. Los dos nos valen. Uh, I haven't heard anything from him from ages. No tengo noticias suyas. I haven't heard from him. O bien, I haven't heard anything from him. Yes, for ages. Desde el año de la polca. For ages. O sea, desde hace edades. Eones, edades, épocas. I haven't heard from him for ages. I haven't heard anything. Cuando no tienes noticias de alguien, en inglés te I haven't heard from. From, procedente de él. I haven't heard from him. O bien, si quieres recalcar más, I haven't heard anything from him. Desde no sé cuándo. For ages. Hola, bienvenidos a clase número 174. Y hoy vamos a ver How's Luis getting on? I haven't heard anything from him for ages. En español, ¿cómo le va a Luis? No sé nada de él desde hace mucho tiempo o desde hace siglos. Bien, vamos con la primera parte. How's Luis getting on? ¿Cómo le va a Luis? Ahora, to get on es un verbo compuesto, un phrasal verb, que en este contexto quiere decir que cómo le va, que cómo están las cosas. How's he getting on? Es lo mismo que how is he doing? O a veces, how is he? ¿Cómo está? Vamos con algunos ejemplos. How's your sister getting on, by the way? ¿Cómo le va a tu hermana, por cierto? How's the rookie getting on? ¿Cómo le va al novato? Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, rookie, que es novato. Un último ejemplo. How's he getting on at his new job? Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. Ah, I have a message for Luis. Luis, it's from your sister Caroline. And she wants to know how you're getting on. That's it. She says, how's Luis getting on? Yes, your sister Caroline in Australia. She wants to know how you're getting on. Pregúntale tú. Eso. How are you getting on, Luis? How are you getting on? Good. So come on, Luis, tell us. How are you getting on? Call me and tell me. Oh, he's too nervous to call. I'm going to ask the other side. Oh, other side, please tell me, how is Luis getting on? How's Luis getting on? I, I know it. Oh, but Caroline, I'm sorry. I can't tell you how Luis is getting on. If you want to know, if you really want to know how your darling brother is getting on, well, you'll just have to call me. I have all the information you need. How Luis is getting on, how your sister's getting on. But first, <clears throat> call me. Bien, vamos con la segunda parte de la frase de hoy, que es heard anything from him. O sea, sé nada de él o sé algo de él. En este contexto, I haven't heard anything from him, es decir, no sé nada de él. Ahora, en inglés decimos no sé nada de él de una forma muy distinta. No decimos I don't know anything of him. Pff, no, suena un poco raro, ¿no? Decimos I haven't heard anything from him. Y cuidado que tampoco decimos I haven't heard nothing from him, que sería la doble negación. Sería I've heard or I haven't heard anything from him. Vamos con algunos ejemplos. I haven't heard anything from my brother. I don't know how he's getting on. I haven't heard anything from Peter. Ahora, cuidado con heard. Heard. Con la D. Márcala bien. Heard. Heard. Repite. Heard. Muy bien. Bien hecho. Nos vemos en un minuto. 
Well, this is strange. Usually Mr. Pilgrim is telling me to do this or do that, but I haven't heard anything from him since Friday. Hmm? Have you? Have you heard anything from him? No? Oh well. I haven't heard anything from him since Friday. Neither of you. That's right, I haven't heard anything from him. Repeat it with me. I haven't heard anything from him. Let me see. Anna, have you heard anything from Mr. Pilgrim? No. Hmm? She hasn't either. That's weird. Let me check. Hmm? And he hasn't been online since Friday either. Nobody's heard anything from him. Oh well, less work for me. Hmm. That's strange. Un desaparecido. A missing person. Everybody's worried about a missing 34-year-old man. His family and friends haven't heard anything from him since Friday. Huh. Should we do that about Mr. Pilgrim? Nobody's heard anything from him since Friday either. <laughs> Bien, vamos con la tercera parte de la frase de hoy, que es for ages, desde hace mucho tiempo o desde hace siglos. Bien, usamos for más tiempo para marcar la duración. Entonces, for ages sería desde hace, desde hace mucho tiempo o desde hace siglos, porque for equivale a desde hace. Bien. Ahora, cuando se diga for ages, procura enlazarlo como si fuera una palabra. For ages, for ages, para que suene muy natural. For ages, repite, for ages. Muy bien. Vamos con algunos ejemplos. I haven't seen them for ages. No les veo desde hace siglos. Fíjate que aquí el tiempo verbal es distinto en inglés. Otro ejemplo. I haven't heard from my brother for ages. No sé nada de mi hermano desde hace siglos. Ahí el tiempo verbal también es distinto. It was terrible. We waited in the cold for ages. Muy bien hecho. Nos vemos en la siguiente clase. You know, I've not been to Sarah's shop for ages. Mm -hmm. For ages. I mean, it's been, I don't know, two hours? Oh, that is ages. Ages. Eso, decimos ages para siglos, ¿ok? Siglos, ages, y no ages, no, ages, ages. Repeat with me. I haven't been to Sarah's shop for ages. Good. One more time. I haven't been to Sarah's shop for ages. Perfect. And I haven't been to the shoe shop for ages. Seriously, for ages. It's been, I don't know, a day, or maybe even two. Oh, that is ages. And I haven't bought any new jeans for ages, ages. I mean, I don't know, three days? Oh, that is ages. And like I said, I haven't been to Sarah's shop for ages. I mean, it's fine. I haven't been for ages, but it's fine. Although, maybe, maybe she has a sale. Oh my God, maybe I'm missing discounts. Oh my God, I haven't been for ages. Maybe there's discounted items. Maybe there's a sale. I haven't been for ages. I have to go.